Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. Hi, I have arrived. I mean, I was here the whole time, but uh, you didn't know that. I, I He lurks I, in the shadows. I just very suddenly appeared. Very stealthy, this Kyle is. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm excited to announce that starting tomorrow, as of when you're listening to this episode, hopefully, that there is another sale going over over at the Bumble Comic Shop uh, in honor of May the 4th to be with you. For the entire month of May, all space-related titles will be 10% off. That's Star Wars. That's Cosmo. That's anything that I can remotely say is space so head on over to BumbleGing.com, look under the Shops tab, use the code MAY and the number 4 to get your 10% coupon on everything slated. Ooh, spacey. Super spacey. It's very spacey. I'm into it. I like it. Was there, was there, was there Sonic in space? That, that only happened, like, that happened before your time, right? Yeah. Okay. And you, it, you... it's not happened in the Sonic books just yet, so that's my excuse there, but... Okay. I did Turtles last month. This It's space this month. Mm. And if you missed out on the original run of Cosmo, there's a few variant covers. If you missed out on the second run of Cosmo, you can grab that up real quick. So it's a good time to just grab up some Star Wars stuff. And yes, I worked on some Star Wars stuff, so you can grab that too. Ooh. Yeah, get, some, get you some Ian Flynn Star Wars stuff. Do it. Do it now. Now. Open up another tab, type in the URL, and go. What's stopping you? Seriously. Go. 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 Maybe we should go on to the Q&A. I think we should. If you want your question answered here on the show, email us at bumblecast.yahoo.com. Tweet to us at Bumblecast. Comment on any YouTube video. Or if you're a patron, ask it in the Q&A question channel over on the Discord. If you want your question answered sooner rather than later, become a $5 patron over at patreon.com backslash Bumblecast or send us two coffees. That's $6 US via Kofi. That's ko ficom backslash Bumblecast. And be sure to include your name and your question. Now, also make sure to check the Q&A master list before you ask your question or any of the FAQs over at BumbleKing.com because if we've already answered it, we're not going to do it again. That would just be retreading all the ground. And who wants to do that? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> it's fine. Do you? It's fun. It's Not fun. another word. It's a well well Except for all the questions you're going to read. It's a well worn groove that we got going on there. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Come on. You can do better. You can do better. I believe in you. I prefer to think that we're just a couple of groovy individuals then. Ah. Okay, you keep thinking that. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm going to ask you this question here, because we're getting into the priority Q&A. Here's one from Pandolce. Hi, Ian. Some fans and I noticed that Eggman was acting different during the Metal Virus arc, being more careless than usual. Was this because he was still affected by his amnesia episode, a plot device to make Starline disappointed, or just the direction that Stega wanted with him? I th it's not that he was any different. I think it's that it was a different context in that Starline was there to point it out. Typically in any Sonic adventure, Eggman does his thing. Sonic interacts with him, tries to stop him and you just are along for the ride. You don't ever really stop and think about just how little follow through he has with any of his plans. <laughs> You know, he blows up the Master Emerald to release chaos just to feed it more chaos emeralds. He doesn't know what that's going to do aside from it's going to give it more power that he assumes he'll be able to control. And we all see how that went. Yeah. He launched a missile into the heart of Station Square and went to manually detonate it because it didn't explode on impact. Didn't quite think how far ahead that was going to go. <laughs> He single-handedly tears his way through the gun facilities to grab Project Shadow, and he has no idea what it is. He just knows it's a thing that he wants. <laughs> Sonic Heroes is all about the fact that he's already lost his own plan. Neo Metal took over before the game started. Sonic Unleashed, he blows up the planet and shoots Sonic and the Emeralds out the airlock, except, whoops, he needed all those. 
proto or bot has a point of saying, yeah, you didn't think that through, did you, genius? So, no, Eggman never, never has a solid plan. It's always a big execution, but he never settles on the details. <laughs> for someone who's supposedly a genius, he sure is dumb. You can't see the forest for the trees sort of thing, or rather the trees for the forest. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Next question here is from Scruffy Matt. Can you think of a quote from any Sonic media, be it games, comics, TV shows, movies, or heck, even those weird choose your own adventure books? That is a fitting description of you. If either of you choose snooping as usual, that's no good. I feel like the first thing that comes to mind was one of the very early issues where Robotnik smashes up a swap bot and says, you're not thorough, you're through. <laughs> I just like that kind of wordplay. <laughs> Mine is, uh, well, I, that's no good is a very good one, actually, ironically. Um, but also the swap bot, this is not a quote, actually, but the swap bot nailing a sign in the ground that says no fun allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me. That's a, that's a very amusing to me. It is, it is fun, which is, which is uh, also ironic because, you know, no fun allowed, but it's very fun. So does that count? <laughs> yeah, that works for me. Sure. Okay. Alternatively, we'll go with Knuckles during his uh, Sonic fight in SA1. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, yep. That's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. Next question is from Andrew D. Sonic and Mario video game universes have swapped. Sonic is now a portly plumber saving Princess Rose from the tyrannical King Eggman. Mario is now the fastest thing alive, stopping Dr. Bowser from conquering the world. What other changes, changes exist? And who is who? Side note, I can't imagine King Eggman would have any interest in marrying Princess Rose unless all their ages swapped, too. Bonus. Now you have access to alternate media. Is Princess Rose now Princess Acorn? Is Bivalve the new Calamity Clam? You guys decide. All I know is that as Wario falls through the atmosphere, he says, This is what you want. It is not syrup. A chance for everyone to be happy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Wario as Shadow? That's... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then, is it, and, bit, and then it's he's, more of a bravado, but deeper, but, uh, well. Yeah, well, as he's falling, he'd go, wah! <laughs> <laughs> and then he just hears, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. <laughs> Any of the knuckle stage raps, but it's all Yoshi singing. Uh. <laughs> yes what where is that i need i need silver gutter to get on that come on someone in silver gutter get on that do that please we have the instrumentals of the knuckles rap songs we need that we oh, need that now Lord. i've cracked myself up with that one <laughs> <laughs> wario is the ultimate life form i mean have you seen him <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Luigi's chased around by a tiny, horrible stuffed Waluigi with an antenna popping out of its head. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of slurp, slurp, it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Almost like microphone feedback, but it's very distinctly a wah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh uh, boy, this is this is uh this is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and to make a joke about the Zeddy replacing the Koopa wings, but that's what they are, so Yeah, I mean <laughs> just swap one for the other and they're exactly the same. Uh well that's convenient at least. Anyway. <laughs> Here's one from off. I understand a certain level of professional unbiasedness is required. What's your personal thoughts on fan groups that advocate for the return of old characters like Rally for Sally, Save Cosmo, and Join Gun? Do you think groups like that are wasting their time and energy? 
Or do you think it's still good for fans to have groups like that where they can come together and show their support? I think they're great. I mean, I'm never one to poo-poo upon fans coming together and sharing their love for what they enjoy. If that ever happens, just drag me out behind the shed and put me on my misery. Good Lord. Right. What kind of Grinch would be like that. But no, no, it's absolutely cool. Um, I think the only thing is that you need to not put your expectations too high because we have seen how fan move, movements can move mountains. I mean, the freaking Snyder cut of all things, but <laughs> you know, it's those moments are so special because they are the ones that actually happen. There are a million and one that do not. So as long as you join these groups with the expectation of I'm going to be with people who enjoy the things I enjoy and we might get something even better out of that. I mean, that's cool. Enjoy yourself. If you're joining these groups thinking you're going to you know, help bolster some kind of militant in- initiative to reshape a franchise, maybe temper your expectations a little bit. Um, cause some of it is just tied up in international legal mumbo jumbo that is so thick that even if the people in charge think it would be a neat idea and would want to do it, it may be that it's just not feasible. The amount of time and energy that it would take to do such things and then make them happen may not equate to a reasonable expenditure of time and money. Uh, That's a giant blanket statement because I can't account for everything, but I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, join hope for the best and enjoy the group that you're with, I guess. Yeah. The thing is, is it's just maybe not don't get lost in the weeds or, you know, it's like a lot of these, a lot of times some of these groups become so just like, they built up a reputation and it's a bad reputation amongst the rest of the community. And then that kind of undermines the whole point. Oh, sure. And it undermines the, uh, the movement as it were. So, you know, just, you got to kind of, it's, it's a, it's a struggle to, uh, keep that, uh, keep the momentum positive and everything. It's, it's hard. So, Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't envy anyone who's <laughs> who's uh, decided to spearhead these things. Really, I mean, it's it's great, it's awesome, but uh, keep, just yeah, keep in mind that uh, you know you don't you don't want to lose sight of what you're actually wanting, and you want to do it uh, respectfully, and you know maybe try and keep the drama clean don't yeah because sometimes these groups just get mixed up in their own drama and, and yeah it's just a it's just a mess so yeah but i, I definitely i also do not poo poo these groups it's just you know keep 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 your keep your uh keep your head up and remember what you're uh what you're you're fighting for essentially here's this question from d gamma Looking back at Archie, and you know what I miss from Archie? Backup stories. I know you don't have any power over this, but does David M. listen to the Bumblecast? I bet IDW could benefit from having backup stories from time to time. Not every four-issue arc needs a full 80 pages. Some of them can do with only 60. You could even have backup stories from guest writers and such. Then again, I don't think IDW books in general usually do backup stories. The only ones I can think of are TMNT Universe and Star Wars Adventures. Closest thing we get otherwise are the annuals and the 30th anniversary special. But still, you hear me, David? That's right, David, David M. of IDW. <laughs> listen listen I, to the Bumblecast. I don't know if David or Riley listen to the show. I mean, yeah. if you do, hi, guys. Mm. How, how you doing? I don't know why they <laughs> I don't know why they would. Why does anybody listen to this do. show? I don't know if they've got the time. But anyway, um... If you want to see something in the book, tell them, you know, write to the comic, uh, tweet to IDW's channel. If you know their handles, tweet to them directly. Just say, you know, I would like to see backup stories in the books and maybe they'll do it. Maybe. 
I mean, fan demand got us the mini series that we've had so far. So clearly they listen. Right. Yeah. I do it. Do it. And also we're going to get this question here from speed weed, which is a great name. Uh, I believe that actually is or someone's real name, but, uh, I don't think it's that. I don't think this is them asking. I think this is someone who's just using the name. But anyway, <laughs> so kind of related to some writing concepts, but for either Ian or Kyle, what makes a good doppelganger character for you? And I mean doppelganger in the sense of Metal Sonic, Dark Samus, best one in my opinion, base, etc. And also, who's your favorite doppelganger antagonist, if I can ask? Do you want to go first since I always answer these things? No, you first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, a good doppelganger is one that highlights the attributes of the protagonist that they're built off of and that they put them in some kind of light that allows you to study the character that they are doppelganging. I don't believe that's actually a word, but I'm making it one. <laughs> like, case in point, Metal Sonic is, you know, sure, he's fast, but he is the antithesis of Sonic in a lot of ways, in that he is silent, he is very direct in his executions, he isn't showboaty, he just gets in and he gets it done at blistering speeds. And it makes you wonder if Sonic were to quit goofing around and you know, focus just how powerful could he be? But at the same time, you see how menacing metal Sonic is, how threatening and sleek he is. And it's like, you don't want that for Sonic. You enjoy his gregarious nature. You like how lively he is. So by putting him next to metal Sonic, all those positive traits are just made more positive. Sure. Yeah, I um, I, do, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of uh, insight on doppelganger characters. I know that uh, like my idea of a good one is one that's like not just a twirling mustache palette swap necessarily, or just like mm -hmm. a, a direct clone, <laughs> except for like one small difference, and they're ooh evil. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like uh, I like a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more of an exploratory sort of thing on that. Now, it's been a while since I went through the primes, but I don't remember Dark Samus as a character too much. When I think of a good doppelganger for Samus, I think quickly of the X Parasite at a fusion. Fusion, yeah. That's the one I because, think of. Because, you know, Samus's whole deal is becoming more powerful and hunting down various things and just blowing them up and the parasite version swaps that role you are the powerless one you are the thing that samus is coming to blow up and that <laughs> that shoe being on the other foot mm. yeah yeah very good yeah i like that one i like uh i like fusion the 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 s-a-x s-a-x there we go thank you or saxophone you can call that Call her, call it, call her uh, saxophone. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're doppelganger characters are fun, either good ones or bad ones. Actually, I mean, sometimes you can have a good, uh, a good version of an evil character, and that can be that can make up for for a fun spins, fun spin on things. But yeah, as, as for favorite. <sighs> Nobody immediately springs to mind. I just, I enjoy the trope. Yeah. You know, whenever you have a good hero, it's like, okay, how could you make that good hero a good villain? Because that's always fun. Base is pretty cool, and Base is a good example. He isn't exactly Mega Man. It's kind of a, it's kind of a thing with him, but he's, uh, he's different, and yet he serves as kind of a foil and a rival for Mega Man. So, yeah. Base, I, is, base is pretty neat. But it's not exactly an evil version of Mega Man, but you know, I, I get it. He's, he's, yeah, he's, I was he's close enough. I mean, you could. These are probably not necessarily hard and fast distinctions. I would see 
base is more of a rival, more of an antagonist. I mean, you can draw parallels to be sure, but I think saying full on doppelganger. Right. Yeah. He's not really, he's missing the key element of being Wiley's son, I guess is the key difference there. He is just another enforcer for Wiley. Right. If there was more of a personal connection, then, you know, there you go. I mean, you could argue that rock being lights, son, and base just being a creation is the mirror version. But at that point, I think it's just a full on antithesis. Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line. What if your doppelganger, what about when your doppelganger is the uh, same character? Like say you have like Superman or any of the Kryptonian characters that come in contact with red kryptonite and you know, they're evil for a little while. Yeah, so that's that's, just, uh, that's a different thing, I know, but it's kind of like I don't know. That's kind of a fun thing too. I like that. Sure, if that if you treat it as the here's the fun thing, not you know get too serious with it. Sure. Although you make me think of in Star Trek Next Generation when Will Riker gets cloned. <laughs> that's the same character when you get down to it. It's just one has the beard, one doesn't. Sure. And Tom is the. I can be a little smarmier because I'm not part of the Federation, but when you get down to it, they're the same guy. Sure. And that's fun. That that's a f- arguably a fairly unique example, at least in my experience. So, yeah, I mean, there's superior Spider-Man who was uh doc Ock in Peter Parker's body. That's, yeah. That's an interesting twist on it. And then didn't they like clone Peter and put, I- I don't know. In there. I don't know. Probably. I mean, why not? It's. It's. I mean, Spider-Man Peter of... fully died, and then Octavius <laughs> fully died when Peter came back, and who can keep track of it? Because, uh, <laughs> it's Spider Man. Uh, There's clones somewhere. <laughs> always, yeah. always clones. Always clones. <sighs> so many clones. They made a whole saga about it. Mm-hmm. They're gonna do it again. I bet you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they already are. <laughs> Or have okay. I don't know. There's something going on. Uh, oh well. Let's get into this question from Diane W. What would Tangle, Whisper, Starline, Jewel, Mimic, Rough, and Tumble's respective favorite animes be? Okay. Um, I don't know. Tangle likes Tupatonga Gurren Lagann because of the title. She hasn't actually seen it <laughs> until she's actually sat down to, and made to watch it, and then the whole idea of spiral power your willpower being able to overcome everything is all about her and she just starts spiral punching with the tail non-stop so they just made it worse (laughs) uh whisper likes the very quiet slice of life type anime where you have extended sequences of them making bento boxes and the greatest trauma is a small bit of drama at high school she just kind of chills out to those (laughs) Jewel doesn't watch anime. She just doesn't think it's right for cartoons to be so adult. And right there, I've just repeated half her fan base. Um, <laughs> Starline is an absolute snob. He will lecture you about how the early 70s and 80s stuff is far superior in terms of artistic storytelling. And Gundam used to be a war show, damn it. And you know, <laughs> he's just a raging otaku and it's extremely tiresome. Yes. Rough and tumble like Dragon Ball Z. (laughs) Of course. That's the only one they've watched. And they love it. Because they're surprised that there's a Japanese version, but you know, hey, cool if they got it too. Sure. (laughs) I mean, that fits perfectly. (laughs) Here's a question from Scurvy Pirate Hog. For the 30th anniversary, any particular reason IDW has decided to go with a one-shot classic Sonic comic and not a four-issue arc or miniseries like Archie did back in the day? Just curious, as I'd imagine with a four-issue arc, there would be room for more story. I can't remember if this was something Sega requested or not. It's been so long, I've forgotten. So I'm going to just say I don't know. (laughs) All right, all right, sure. Go with that. I don't know either. Nobody at IDW tells me anything. It's kind of a shame. I wish they would. Well, you have to be on the staff for them to do so. 
we, we, we can figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from PC the Unicorn. Ian, since we never saw sticks during the Zombot apocalypse, due to Sega not wanting her in the book at the time, how do you think she would react to it? Do you think she was able to avoid getting infected? And if not, how do you think she ended up getting infected? Well, see, she saw this coming from a mile of way. Of course. I mean, zombie invasion, she, people being turned into robots. Uh, it, obvious. It was going to happen any day. She was talking That's about it for had, years. <laughs> exactly. I mean, she thought that would come after the alien invasion, but, you know, whatever. A small miscalculation. But no, she was totally prepared for this. And she went completely off the grid. And she was very smug atop her mountaintop, perfectly safe from the entire virus and congratulating herself about how she survived and how they'll never get her. And then she gets a little stir crazy because she's alone and she can't really tell anyone that she was right, or at least be acknowledged that she was right. So maybe she should go down and see if anything has, you know, if there's any survivors, because then she could help them if she can, you know, verify them first because they might be spies. And she gets down (laughs) and found that the world was cured. There you go. That'll work. Or maybe she thinks it's a prank. It's all a hoax. Oh, that she doesn't think it actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Oh it. yeah, guys, you you saw my three hundred page binder on doomsday scenarios, and you're putting this elaborate hoax together just to prank me. Real funny, ha <laughs> ha. Yep, 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 yep. She survives the zombie apocalypse completely oblivious that it actually happened. I, uh, I'll take that too. Yeah, either one, either one of those is good. Either one of those is great. I'll take either one. <laughs> one definitely feels more like a sonic boom plot yeah and it's the latter <laughs> but still either one here's a question from red scarf uk seeing a building that looks identical to a familiar gambling and entertainment venue visited during a certain adventure cast upon a dream in a very recent comic starring the nocturnal echo locating flying Mammal Man got me wondering which Sonic characters would fill which roles in the Batman franchise. Assuming Sonic takes the role of the Dark Knight himself, it's obvious that Tails would be Robin the Boy Wonder, but who could fill the rest of those slots? Okay, just to be clear, there was a panel from a recent Batman issue that was pretty much just Casinoopolis out of Sonic Adventure. That's what's being referenced, in case yeah. you missed that. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that, yes, Sonic is the title character, but I don't see him as the Batman. You need someone who is gruff, someone who looks out to protect something he holds precious, someone who's known for getting all rough and tumble and working with his fists. So it should be Knuckles. Yes. Knuckles should be the Batman, which would make (laughs) Sonic the wisecracking cooler version. So he's Nightwing. Nightwing. (laughs) The... Incredibly smart sidekick off to the side that makes Tails into oh I'm blanking on him Tim Drake Tim there Drake. we go yeah Tim Drake uh, Amy is Babs you know competent gadget girl on the side uh, begs the question who would be Jason then <laughs> Shadow No, nah, he's Azrael oh, okay the entirely too far up his own ass dark version of the Batman. <laughs> Granted, my experience with Azrael is like his initial, his initial incarnation. I know there's been changes since then. Don't at me. Uh, SBO somewhere in there. Maybe mm, the chaotics are more of a unit though. Mm. Maybe they're part of the GCPD make vector into Bullock. <laughs> Or maybe Vector is uh, Commissioner Gordon. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Doesn't have the disposition for Gordon, but... No, I guess not. I don't know. I mean, Rouge and Selena is pretty easy. Yeah. That's kind of a gimme. Catwoman? More like Batwoman. Yes. Uh, I mean, where would Blaze fall? Would she be... Hmm. Kate? Or would she be more of a Montoya or is she just so overpowered? She should be like 
Diana off to the side uh, coming in from Themyscira. No, she's, you know, a whole other world removed from that of man. No, Blaze is, Blaze is probably Kate, yeah. All right. Uh, who's the Joker? <laughs> a flamboyantly over-the-top present presenter who is able to wield destruction on obscene levels despite having no actual powers. He's Eggman. And that works. Or Charmy. Or Bean. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that's it. I think that's. I mean, when I you get to the rogues the gallery, ones. you're kind of running out of room. Right, right. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of think of the bat all the Batman characters. There've been several different Batgirls. Um, and then you have Huntress. I don't know. Maybe Blaze fits Huntress too. I don't know. Could be either way. Starline is Riddler. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> Go with that. Uh, Rough and tumble are the revolving henchmen, depending on whoever's coming through at the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't know. Make up your own. Have have more. Have more. Have more. Zavok. Zavok. Hmm. Seeing here, Zavok could be Bane. The Zeti or the League of Shadows? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Sure. I'll, I'll go with that. Sure. I mean, he's kind of known for getting huge in his big final fights. All right. Yeah. Sure. I'll work not? with that. <laughs> uh, all right. That's, I think that's enough for now. Let's move on to a question from Noni. What does the word home mean to any of the characters in Drogoon? Is it the ship they use, the people they surround themselves with, or something else entirely? Ah, uh, such a good question. It's from such a good person. <laughs> uh, as, for, as far as the crew is concerned, the Fortune Slap is their home. Uh, for Wind and Lissy, that's all they've ever really known. Wind is very, very aware that that is her home because she has to be in hiding. She cannot be just herself anywhere else in the world so while she you know certainly enjoys life on the ship she is very aware that that is her bubble that is her limitation and it gnaws at her um lissy's too young to really question that just yet uh you know it's things are still very new to her new and exciting and fun jobun is he kind of just takes things with the flow you know, this is his ship now. This is where he is. He served on previous ships. He had, you know, he was in other places at other times. And that's just where he was right now. Fortune is where he is. And as for foreign, oh, there's much story to be told with foreign. Where he's from, why he's not there anymore, and so on and so forth. But for now, the fortune is his home because that's where he is and that's where he has to be and there really isn't any other option for him right now Alrighty, cool like getting that insight into uh drogoon stuff and finally our last priority question this week comes to us courtesy of son amy channel ian if sonic team allows amy rose to go super in idw sonic what dramatic situation would you have happen that would trigger amy's ability to go super alongside sonic what powers would she have how would she and Supersonic battle the final boss together? You're asking for a very specific plot, and I cannot provide that. <laughs> yeah, but... sure, spoil the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of depends on how Sega would want their kind of premier female characters, Super State, to be portrayed. That's not up to me. Uh, if it were on my plate to do the unveiling, though, I'm of two minds. One is to clearly set it up, you know, not necessarily spell it out. This is going to happen, but seed the breadcrumbs to the transformation so that fans would be able to. It's like the roller coaster cresting the hill. You know, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen here. We get to it and then boom, she's become super. Hell yeah. They've been teasing this for like three months. Get them, Amy. <laughs> On the other hand, it would be fun to just surprise with it so that it, the elements are all there, but you never see it coming because it's Amy never goes super. Why would you expect her to clearly, this is going to be a Sonic or silver shadow moment. And then 
for whatever reason, Amy gets the power and woof, there she is. I don't know which would be better because on the one hand, <laughs> it's like smelling a delicious meal as it's being cooked and then it's being presented. You're salivating for it. You're expecting it. You know, the expectation is almost as fun as the acquiring of it. But on the other hand, that surprise, that kind of woo moment would be just as much fun. So I don't know. Comment in the video below. Let us know which you would like to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could go either way. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm into it regardless. Well, you go ahead and go down there and uh, leave your comments. We're going to go ahead and take a little break, and then we'll be right back with more of the Bumblecast. <laughs> Let us carry on and jump into the standard Q&A. Here's this very, very uh, interesting question from Gummy Frijoles. One night, you hear something rumbling around in your kitchen. You get out of bed wearing your Dr. Eggman-themed pajamas while holding a baseball, bla baseball bat and a flashlight. Tiptoeing out of your two-door room, you turn on your flashlight and say out loud, Anyone there? before your eyes adjust to see a small, shadowy figure scurrying towards you. It's already near you in an instant. Shooting your flashlight at it, it's revealed to be a four-foot-tall man wearing nothing but a blue b mohawk bike helmet, a black clown nose, red boots, and Mickey Mouse gloves. Everywhere else besides his mouth, arms, belly, and legs, he's entirely covered in blue paint. He says to you, Ian, I need your help. Please, come help me. He holds out his hand to you before then tackled by a very obese, bald, long-mustached police officer. Don't worry, he'll be away for a long time, he says. You go back to bed and sleep. Next morning, you get a call from IDW telling you that you're, you're back to being the main writer for their hit video game-based comic series, and they that they will tweet about it after hanging up. You hop on your PC to retweet the news until you read the full tweet. Ian Flynn is back to being the head writer... For the iconic video game mascot, Bubsy the Cat. What do you do now, Ian? There's a scene out of Tales of Graces. <laughs> and it's a quote that I like to use a lot. Where Richter says in a very halted tone, Well, that certainly was specific. <laughs> uh, well, I think clearly I would just continue writing Bubsy. I mean, I've, doing, I've been doing it for 15 years after its various incarnations um excited for the new vr game that's coming out <laughs> um not sure about the soft reboot they're doing with it or the fact that bubsy is like part alligator now but you know whatever you, you kind of roll with the franchise as it comes to you and <laughs> you know you, you take what you can as you get it oh well what could possibly go wrong exactly turns out everything <laughs> Oh, Bubsy. Oh, Bubsy. Next question is from Daddler the Dalek. I know it's a pre-reboot Archie question, but this is a really important question. Not really that important, not at all. What was the deal with the great, mighty, not the armadillo, all-powerful bivalve? Was he really a good guy? What was he up to? Do you remember, Ian? Is Kyle confused yet? Uh, here's, here's the thing, Daddler. I'm always confused. <laughs> that's your secret, Cam. That's my that's my secret. Yes. Um, I don't want to get into it too much because I did have penciled in this absolutely horrible pun plan for him. Insofar as it wasn't a serious pitch, but if it did got get picked up, it'd be funny. But <laughs> get down to it, bivalve was a running gag. He was a joke. I can't remember if it was John Gray who started it by just putting him in everywhere or if it's kind of an in-house joke with the artists and I decided to run with it because I don't know to leave well enough alone or I don't remember the origin. Just Bivalve was the running gag. <laughs> it seems like a John thing. I, I blame him. We can blame him. It's fine. He won't notice. Because I want to say maybe it was Tracy Yardley who had like Bivalve inside the giant aquarium that had Auckland in it i don't remember yeah it's but yeah long. but yeah but john codified the meme i think you know tracy, tracy i don't want to give him too it. much credit because john's pretty much always 
the origin of all bad ideas that I eventually take seriously because I don't know better. Freaking <laughs> nerves. I'm looking at you. <laughs> so it could very well be, but I don't want to, you know, just throw it in his lap and say, this belongs to you. When he may be innocent, for once, he may not have been the problem. It could have been Tracy. Could have just as easily, easily been Tracy. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I'm confused, so I don't know. <laughs> what I do know is we have another question here from Dane the Great. Any opinions on Rouge's changes in attire in Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog before settling on her original SA2 appearance? My memory betrays me in some crazy way. Like, it's where she looked completely different in Shadow's game. I'd skipped over Heroes, even. But apparently, only the colors are a bit off, particularly in her wings, of all things. The obvious assumption is that Sega wanted to tweak how sexual she appeared to be, but abandoned the effort. Is there a narrative context that you care to play with? Not really, because I hate the Heroes outfit. <laughs> it is a stupid-looking outfit, and yeah. it's ugly, and I don't like it. So I just choose to ignore it. And in Shadow, it's weird because it's using a lot of the hero's assets. So it's got Rouge's model, but it's been rebuilt to be her classic or not classic, her original design for the most part. The difference being colors, but it's still the same, you know, bodysuit and boots, except in SA2 and in later games, her models were built with that outfit in mind. And in Shadow, it's the old outfit, but attributed to the hero's model, which was a very different body shape. And it looks really bad. And it's no good. So That's and you can say no a lot good. about Shadow's so that. Yeah. So, no, I just prefer to ignore it entirely. <laughs> I mean, she's had so many outfits over the course of the games and such that just say that she, you know, alternates and whatnot. It, it's not a big deal. Now, if they gave her the spy outfit from the mobile games that were recently released, I'd be cool with that because that looked really awesome. I liked that a lot. But yeah, her hero's outfit is dumb and I try to ignore it. Yeah, the, the spy outfit is awesome, but the hero's outfit, uh, not so much. A little weird. And if they were trying to make her design less sexualized, they kind of failed. <laughs> uh, her writers, yeah, Rouge's writers' outfit's cool too, uh, and also her oh, yeah. uh, her Olympics outfit is pretty neat. Uh, that one I'm not familiar with, but still, yeah, either one is pretty good. Next question is from Aaron M. I've always wanted to make my own Sonic comic fan series, like Sonic Rebound. And I was wondering if I could get your consent to do so and to base it on the events of Forces and the IDW comics and use characters like Tingle and Whisper within my series. Also, could I reintroduce Lupe the Wolf in this series as well? Uh, I cannot grant that consent or permission or whatever because I don't control those assets. I am of the opinion that if you want to do a fan work, do a fan work. Go nuts. Do your thing. Uh, don't try to sell it because that's copyright infringement and you'll be inviting trouble onto yourself. I am not speaking for any of the licensors or publishers. I am not doing that in any kind of legal capacity. Mm -mm, David Riley, if you're listening, I'm not doing that. But you don't have to ask me for permission to, you know, have fun with ideas. I mean, go for it. Make your fan comic. Go wild. Go nuts. Have fun with it. I wish you the best of luck. Just don't show it to me because I can't look at it for legal reasons. Do it. Do it. Do it. Take them all. Use all them characters. Do it. Here's one from Igor L. Is there any possibility that Deco and Boko could appear in the comic? No. Okay. Good to know. Psycho Does Stuff asks, how do you think Sally and Nicole's first date would go like? What sort of hijinks do you think would occur? I feel like it would be kind of understated, actually, but, uh, hmm, that's just me. I feel like it would be not there wouldn't be many hijinks <laughs> not like with whisper there, and tangle you know tangles no tangle, no that tangle is hijinks embodied <laughs> so you know <laughs> I, I guess off the top of my head here it would be a little awkward at first because it's that decision to 
take the step beyond friendship and trust in each other to something more. And that's always a scary step, especially for someone, for a couple that's had such a long and deep friendship and that the evolution kind of snuck up on them. So Mm -hmm. in that regard, I would imagine they're both kind of, they both want to, you know, take, make that commitment, but they're also a little worried because if things go wrong, they're not just losing out on a relationship. They're losing out on a really great friendship and neither of them wants that. I think any hijinks that would ensue would come from the extended cast trying to make sure everything goes just right. (laughs) And that never, never works. (laughs) Or Eggman attacks and, you know, they move heaven and earth to protect date night. (laughs) I I feel like Sonic would be a pretty good wingman, you know, though. There's there's that kind of thing with him. Amy taps in and says, hey, Nicole, just real quick, don't look at the sensors. Can you feed like half the city of Nanites into my hammer? I need it for a mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you need any help? No, 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 no. You two enjoy your evening. Enjoy the carbon era. Just, I, I need a really big hammer for the moment. Can I just assess this for one second? Nope. No, 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 no. Enjoy your evening. Just, you know what? Never mind. This hammer <laughs> will do. Forget I asked. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's what. And then happen. they both get involved because they can't very well just sit there and ignore the situation. No, 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 they could not. But you know, still funny, still funny. I like it. Sad we never got it. And finally, our last question from a game apologist. You didn't like pizza, Ian. I was picky too. But good God, man, what did you eat as a child? Water? Maybe an ice cube if you're feeling adventurous. <laughs> uh i was a cheeseburger kid <laughs> and otherwise it was peanut butter and jelly i mean i like both of those but i also cheese. like pizza <laughs> what? i i've it was an existential crisis for me that the ninja turtles ate pizza and i did not or that <laughs> sonic ate chili dogs and i did not it was these were real problems for me growing up kyle deep deep personal issues I, yeah, but no. I can imagine. <laughs> no, I was a I was a peanut butter jelly kid for probably entirely too long. <laughs> of course, I also used to eat my cocoa krispies in the morning with a big glass of orange juice. So I'm not really one to judge anyone on their tastes, but y'all are very much open to judge me because I I don't know I got no explanation. <laughs> Uh, an ice cube if you're feeling adventurous i'm one of those who actually likes ice but oh ice is great i also like you know food (laughs) 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 Uh, anyway that's it that's all we got all right before we wrap it up i'm going to give a big thank you to all the people who make this show possible via patreon and coffee Big thank you to Daniel H, Alex P, James K, John B, Jennifer R, Samuel P, Robotnik, Home, Sam, Cybercat, Mike B, Justin G, Torchbound, Coupling Crew, 128, Do Is Diz, Dins, Scruffy Matt, Andrew D, Chris A, John M, Sonny, Don B, Yami M, H, H, K, San Fritz, <sighs> Salute Your Cat, Lisa M, Chevelle, Silly String, Nonny, Bradley TT, Off, Dave M, Blue Title Gamer, Tick Tick, Papa Drip, Tapap, KKM, J Frost, Final Neil, Diga Madripadopolis, you're both doing it to me, Jim. Jonathan D, <laughs> Hero of Light 13, Rachel W, Godzilla, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, PC, The Unicorn, Piggy Bank, Dabbler, The Dalek, Preston N, Daniel B, Sony, N, Dove, Owen BD, <sighs> Jonathan W, Red the Supernamic, Ryan D, Flixie, Sapphire, Scarletta, Chase L, Joe S, Turbo, Red Bull, Fernando G, Crooker, Pandolce, Speedweed, Scurvy, Pirate Hog, and Son Amy Channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your support. And for, for, for everything you guys do, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Ian, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. My personal website, BumbleKing.com, which has links to my full portfolio, the FAQs, the shop, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And my original series, Drogoon, that's D-R-O-G-U-N-E dot com, which is a science fantasy epic with sonic artist Adam Bryce Thomas making it look absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, Adam has a bunch of deadlines to hit and a cross-country move to do at the same time. So we're taking a little bit of a break so he doesn't, you know, 
go insane. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back hopefully early summer uh, once he's had time to settle and, you know, unpack. The man is an absolute beast, but let's let's not push him too far. I, I need him in good condition. Kyle, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at KyleJCRB. You can also head on over to my website, KNGI.org. That's the KNGI Network and the home of Nitro Game Injection, which is my other show dedicated to video game music. And you can listen to that one streaming live on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also head over there and find uh, the Bumblecast in MP3 downloadable format for your listening pleasure on any device along with uh, a ton of other shows you can also listen to and enjoy. So, what are you waiting for? Go over there and do that. Follow the show on Twitter at Bumblecast. Contact us at Bumblecast at Yahoo.com and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, our YouTube channel, and KNGI.org. And don't forget to check out the Bumble Store, shop.spritcher.com slash Bumble Store to get some Bumble accessories. We specialize in Bumble and Bumble accessories over there, so uh, head on over there and get them. Not to be confused with the actual Bumble and Bumble brand, because that we don't sell that. We're, mm. we're not affiliated. It's very different. Yes, and also not to be confused with propane and propane accessories. It's totally no. different. I'll tell you what. You can also catch Bumblecast Gaming live streaming on YouTube. That's youtube.com backslash Bumble King videos Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. If, you, if that's all I got, then uh, I don't know. Do we have anything else? You got anything else you want to say, Ian? Not for right now. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll see you next week for more Bumblecast. See you all next time. Bye-bye. Ian, since we never saw six... You can find me on my... Mm-hmm. I completely... Yeah. Quick reboot. <clears throat> Valerie PB and J is for poor kids that never had real food lol uh man you're such a hater you've been listening to the Bumblecast a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder remixed intro by T Lopes find out more information along with podcast feeder links mp3 downloads and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. I'm glad we have an extra long recording session scheduled for today. Jesus H. Jumping Hopscotch Christ. Yes, that's what the H stands for. Hopscotch. It's true. <laughs>